listening to the Godcast. Cross up on my back, I'm slaying demons. It don't matter what you call that. Searching for the truth, facts are facts until they fall flat. It's looking like a story, man, it's all cap. But it's goodness over darkness, it ain't all bad. I'm at my maker, but I was called back. Emmanuel, show my people they're under a spell. Heaven or hell is free will. I made my choice and now it's well with my soul. I pray the same for you as well. Welcome to the Godcast. Welcome to the Godcast. Hello once again. Thank you for coming back. If you haven't seen parts one and two of Christ's Millennial Kingdom, the Thousand Years of Peace and its Destruction. I suggest you go watch those to be caught up to date on what we are going to discuss today, which is part three, Revelations. So did it already occur? So we went over in part one, you know, what is it? Then in part two, we started to show what could have been these builds that only the creator of everything could build in these sacred geometry patterns and these frequencies of healing and how it all correlates. So did it already occur? So Revelation 1-4, John to the seven churches which are in Asia. This is what John said. Grace be to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Revelation 1, 19-20 Write, therefore, the things that you have seen, those that are, and those that are to take place after this. As for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. So what are the seven churches? What do they have to do with anything? Well, we're talking about the seven churches of Asia that are talked about in the book of Revelation. So here we have Asia Minor, modern day Turkey. Okay, you got across the sea here is Greece. And here are the seven churches. So you have the church of Pergamum, which you can't see because it's cut off. But you have the church of Theatira, Sardis, Smyrna, Ephesus, and Laodicea. So there are the seven churches of Asia. So if you aren't familiar with that part of Revelation, I didn't include that in the slideshow, but you can go read uh, those chapters. I believe it's uh, three and four, maybe even into five, where you, they start talking about the seven churches of of Asia, and that they'll be destroyed for what they are doing, except for the Church of Philadelphia. That was the only one that Jesus was pleased with. So these buildings, these are the remains of the seven churches of Asia. This looks like it was a building that was destroyed. It doesn't look like this is just remains from something that was so old it started falling apart by itself. It's not what it appears to me to be, especially if they were as important as it's claimed. I mean, this is standing. This These look perfectly fine, these pillars that are standing up. These look great, actually. They look in really good condition, but there's they weren't maintained. If they were greatly important, wouldn't they be maintained? Or could they have just been destroyed? Like this one, you can see that maybe it, the roof looks like, okay, it could have some wear and tear and it fell in. But these pillars, some of them, I mean, this still has the spiral on it, perfect, almost perfect. I mean, these are great, con greatly constructed buildings and they're still holding up. Well, I think that they were probably destroyed. Like, look at this. You can see it's like a bowl here, right? It's like an amphitheater almost. Look at still in good condition but it looks like they were destroyed this again another like this altar the stairway up here i mean it looks like it was destroyed it doesn't look like it's just ruins 
from weathering for a long time. Here's a, another picture of that amphitheater, an inside picture, and this is the Church of Ephesus. I mean, this is this is still together really well. You know, all the seating up here. You have these stairs. This is really nicely built. You have these this flooring. I mean, looks like it was destroyed. You have all these different little pillars. I'm not sure what they would have been holding. Maybe a stage. You would have had people talking up here. I'm not totally sure how it would have been set up. Church of Laodicea. These pillars, I mean, they're still in pretty good shape. Uh, you would think that they would not be in the shape that they are if it was the weathering. And you see that they have built this steel frame structure over top of it so that they could then go through everything and restore it or dig or whatever they're doing in here. But, I mean, look at all these different pillars. I don't think it would be like this unless it was destroyed. Church of Pergamum. This is the altar of Satan here. Very interesting. You have all these people sitting down, and then somewhere in the front here would be Satan speaking. That's what's known as is the... Uh, I don't know exactly why it would be called the altar of Satan, but that is what it was known as in the Church of Pergamum. You can look all that up. I mean, look at this pillar. It looks like it still has its outside casing on this one as well, for the most part. I mean, these look like they were destroyed. It does not look like it was just from weather, from a constant barrage of weathering. Church of Philadelphia, again, this is the only church that Jesus was pleased with. This was some kind of archway. And these are huge, just in the middle of the city now. These are huge pillars. So this archway must have been very grand. And it's interesting that that's all that remains, where the other ones still have some remains all over the place. This is really all that there is. And then somewhere in amongst the city is this tomb, because this Church of Philadelphia must have been like a city itself. It must have been huge, massive. I mean, look how big this is compared to what's in the background here, compared to these trees and everything. I mean, get a feel for how large this archway must have been. That looks destroyed. So let's go over Revelation chapter 9. Some interesting stuff. So we're in verses 1 through 6 here. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, Smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. As a side note, keep that in mind for later episodes, later parts of the series. All right, so back to three here. And out of the smoke, locusts came down on the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes. During those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. All right, so in chapter in verse 5 here, it says they were not allowed to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. So what's the significance of five months? Well, if you remember, it's going to be the days like of Noah that are going to happen again. It's going to be like the days of Noah. So what happened in the days of Noah was Noah was on his ark for five months, 150 days, precisely as the Bible records it, which is five months of 30 days. So for five months, the watchers, the fallen angels, watch their children be destroyed and tormented while they were locked in chains as they have already been judged. And their children, the Nephilim, the earthbound beings that were ruling over everything that were had become evil, 
they were drowning for five months. So those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads, and they don't have the seal of God on their foreheads because that's the path that they chose, they would be allowed to be tortured so that like the fallen had to watch their children be tortured, God has to watch his children be tortured because of the same uh, mind frame that the children of the watchers chose to be evil, like the children of God chose not to seek God and chose not to have the seal of God on them by living the way that they lived. That's an interesting aside for you guys. Revelation 9, 7 to 11. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. On their heads, they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails with stingers, like scorpions, and in their tails they had power to torment people for five months. They had as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek is Apollyon, that is, destroyer. So keep in mind here, things, this scorpion race that we'll call it, have stingers like scorpions. They're not exactly the same, but the stingers like scorpions. They appear to be horses prepared for battle. They have the faces of humans. They have the hair of women. They have the teeth of lions. They have breastplates like breastplates of iron. And they have wings that sound, that are thundering and sound like many horses and chariots rushing into battle. And they have one king over them who is the destroyer. All right, so keep that in mind. And again, they had tails with stingers like scorpions, and in their tails they have power to torment people for five months. Okay, five months, remember. Now, in my opinion, this has already occurred. So how would it have occurred? Gargoyles. They are the remnants and they were only alive for five months, and then they were cast, in my opinion, cast back into the abyss by being cast, their physical bodies being cast into stone as their false spirits were taken out and sent back to the abyss. So these legends of gargoyles and saints trace back to St. Romanus, who lived in the 7th century as Bishop of Rouen in France. At the time, the story goes, a fire-breathing dragon was loose in the area near the Seine River, and was devouring people. No one except a condemned man would join Romanus on the hunt for the creature. Romanus subdued it with the sign of the cross and took it back to town, where it was buried. How, or, sorry, where it was burned. However, since its head and throat had been fireproofed by its own breath, they did not burn. So the head and throat were attached to the local church, and so the legend of gargoyle began. So the head and throat had been fireproofed by its own breath. Now, when we start getting into fossils of T. rexes, if they were fire breathing dragons, the only remains you would find would be the head and the throat. And that's exactly what you find with T. rexes. You don't find anything else but the head and the spine. So, why? Because they did not burn, because they were fireproof, because that's how it breathed fire. They were destroyers, right? So let's look at some of these gargoyles. This guy on the right here, this looks like a horse prepared for battle. It looks like it's wearing some kind of gear over its face. It's covering its eyes. Looks like maybe it has a breastplate here like a breastplate of iron, like it's ribbed, has wings that maybe would be thundering if it was flying. Now, you can't say if it has a tail. Possibly it does, possibly it doesn't. This guy here, he has a horn on his head. He's a goat-like being, but he's upright like a man with the hands of a man, has the beard of a billy goat, the horn of a billy goat, the face of a goat. 
or maybe it's a man wearing this mask. Who knows exactly what it is, but it looks like some kind of hybrid creature staring out over the city. Uh, here's a guy who uh, has a man, the face of a man. It has claws of some kind of animal, some kind of beast, some kind of flying beast, it appears. There's a, another depiction behind him that has the face of a man. These gargoyles, why do they look the way they do? Why do we have gargoyles? This guy right here looks like a devil, has a reptilian eye, has devil horns. I mean, I think this is like exactly like the Duke Blue Devils. This is what their logo looks like, essentially. And they're all extending into the building. This guy right here has long hair, longer than the others, like long hair of a woman. Is this maybe a false prophet here? He's wearing a scarf uh, like some priests wear with crosses on it. And it has, he has a feather and ink right there with him to write things. It has a black tongue. It looks like the face of a man, but it's like a beast, like maybe some kind of like frog that is in the shape of a man. I'm not too sure. Then this guy on the right here, look at this long neck, sharp teeth, like a lion here. Uh, wings again and it's going into the building so we don't know if they have tails because these they're always propped up this way where they're coming out of the building it seems then you have a whole bunch here that this is the side of a building i turned this photo on the side so you could uh, see all these guys but you imagine they're hanging off the side of a building that maybe they were just hanging out there and then boom they were cast into the abyss their spirits cast into the abyss, they're cast into stone, and now they're stationary where they were. These all look like humans, maybe. This is like a dog. I, I mean, there are all sorts of different creatures that was described. That's what they would look like. This guy right here, he has horns on top of his head. He has wings. He's looking out over the city. This guy here on the right, it looks like this is some kind of creature with sharp claws. It has wings. It looks horrifying. This thing, something could have been riding on its back coming in, and it would have been tormenting people. You could only imagine. Now, these ones right here, uh, along with this first guy I was talking about, they, well, I can't see the front of this one, but these look like they are fake. Even this guy looks like he's been restored in some sense that the wings don't match the rest it's just a smoother look to it but maybe that may be the sun but there's not as much detail in these guys that they look like they were created you know this looks like a creation not something that was implanted there the way this is or the way the other ones were that i was showing you that look very realistic and again they were using uh, technology to do this that that we're told that they like how could they have technology like we're told that they were using horse and cart to build buildings and that the roads were all mud and that they were dumb people who were farming and that they were always ill because they had no medicine and just remember the time periods that we're talking about here we're told that we are more advanced now because of the technologies that we have, right? That's what they always use. The computers and robotics that we have, they make us believe that we are more advanced because we have that these things. When these people were making this stuff that, yeah, we can make this today, sure. But the, what we're told about the people in the past, they probably shouldn't have been able to have time to do this. Because they were trying to build, because everything, they were trying to make communities. Everything was just uh, in shambles, right? That's what they tell us, that these people had horrible lives and that they were all oppressed. How would they make time, have time to make stuff like this? I mean, this guy, this looks like the head of a female lion, too. It doesn't necessarily look like a male lion, but a female lion without a, a mane. Very interesting. 
All right, so Revelation 20. Now, we read this in part two, but I think it's important to read it again here. So 20, 1 through 3. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. And he seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the dragon of thousand years, and threw him into the pit and shut it and sealed it over him so that he might not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years, excuse me, until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be released for a little while. So that's the time I believe that we are in, is that he must not deceive, that he might not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be released for a little while. That's the time period that I believe we're in, that all the nations are deceived right now. Nobody knows anything that's going on right now. You can see all the deception everywhere in the world and that it's been around since the 1800s the time period that we keep referencing back to. So Revelation 24, And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Revelation 25 and 6. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. So until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So the rest of the dead, that's who we are, did not live again. Why people think they have reincarnation and why they've lived before. They would not live again until the thousand years were finished because the thousand year millennial kingdom has already occurred. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. So that is us, right? So this actually gets confusing here in the next part where it says, Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ. So that part's not confusing because, again, we now understand our place in time and history and why we're back again and and why we learn the errors of our ways. We suffer through a lot of things to learn the discernment of God so that we may enter into heaven and just walk out of this life into the next eternally. So the second death will have no power over us. But now it's the confusing part. It says, and shall reign with him a thousand years. But it already says that the thousand years were finished. So that's kind of confusing that it has that at the end. And another aside for that is how many people there are on earth at the moment. There's almost 8 billion and there's never been anywhere close to this many in the past, nowhere close to it. And the way the math works, it's very strange, but to get one person now a thousand years ago, there would have been one billion people. If they're the way that it all works out, you have two parents who ha- each have two parents who each have two parents. So you keep multiplying by two and a generation happens every 30 years or so. So if that were the case, it actually it's about 25 years as the uh, mainstream statistics. So if that were the case and you keep multiplying uh, by two, starting from one, and just multiplying that by itself, well, or multiplying by two, uh, you end up with over a billion for from a thousand years ago. So it takes a billion people to create a billion people a thousand years ago to just create me, which it's going to be different. It's going to be all from that because of uh, different people are going to be sleeping with others from other you know, your great grandfather and your great, 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 great grandfather may be essentially the same person, you know, in some way, it may not always be that it's one generation that's birthing kids, but there's mixing and matching. So even if we take away half of that number, it's going to take about 500 million people to have lived a thousand years ago to, to birth me. I mean, that's a lot. We take three quarters of that number away, we're talking still 250 million. 
Well, guess what? There was only 300 million people worldwide, according to the mainstream statistics. So hell that those numbers add up. They don't. So again, the amount of people that we have here now, having 8 billion people or nearly 8 billion people, we are all of those who died that did not accept Christ and now we are here again for a second chance to accept him so that we may have death the second death may have no power over us and we can all live eternally we were all in a waiting room essentially on the other side the thin veil we were on the other side of that veil as spirits and now we have incarnated as humans again so that we can we can all make it to heaven we can live out our punishment and go through all that we need to go through so that we may go into heaven and that's probably why satan had to be released from the pit to rule over us and to divide us and separate us and pull us apart and make us be deceived so that we could figure all these types of things out for ourselves so revelation 20 7 and 8 and when the thousand years are ended satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth gog and magog to gather them for battle their number is like the sand of the sea which again we have eight billion people on earth now i don't know if that's the number of the sand in the sea sand of the sea but it's a way more than was around when this was written I mean, we're we're talking. I think there was like two hundred million people worldwide. There, it's alleged, but we have eight billion. It's a lot. Revelation twenty nine and ten, and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever so the beast and the false prophet are already in the lake of fire and brimstone at this point because satan was loosed on the earth after the thousand years so before the thousand years the beast and the false prophet would have been cast into the lake of fire and brimstone but The devil wasn't. The devil that deceived them, Satan, who was deceiving everyone, he wasn't cast into the lake of fire and brimstone yet. He was freed from the abyss. But the beast and the false prophet are already there. And they're being tormented day and night forever and ever for what they have done. Okay? So remember that line right here, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devour them. All right, so Luke 21, uh, chapter 21, verses 31 and 32. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I say to you, and this is Jesus speaking, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. So this generation saying, you people who I'm speaking to now before I am dead and hung on the cross, crucified and resurrected, before that happens, he's saying, truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Okay, keep all that in mind. He said this generation, meaning it was going to happen then. So this is Isaiah 30. 26. So the reason why I bring this up before I read it is for a while now, for many, many months, I have been talking about a larger sun that went around the outer ring of that we know as Antarctica on the flat earth model. I don't know the flat earth model to be true or anything. That's a whole other issue. But when we look at it in that manner, we are talking about a larger sun. I am proposing the idea that a larger sun was going around that area. And even if it's a spherical earth, 
and Antarctica is somehow still a ring around the spherical Earth, you know, that there was a larger sun that was going around that. And I had the idea that this larger sun was going around it and exploded. And that's what caused a lot of different events, right? So there's Tierra del Fuego. Antarctica is known as Tierra del Fuego on the Urbano Monte map of 1587. It's also now it's in South America. It's called uh, Tierra del Fuego. But back in the those days, 1500s or so, uh, South America and Antarctica were connected. And Antarctica was called Tierra del Fuego. It wasn't called Antarctica because it wasn't an Arctic. It wasn't cold. It was so hot that people couldn't go there. And that you have Patagonia, the land of giants in South America, that humans couldn't go to Tierra del Fuego because of the heat. And I'll get into the Urbano Monte map of 1587 in a little while here. But I had this idea that our sun, and I just said this recently on my appearance on Fire Theft Radio, and I didn't know this passage to be a Bible passage. So let me read the Bible passage. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold, as the light of seven days, in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people, and healeth the stroke of their wound. So when that would be the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people, that's the rapture, and healeth the stroke of their wound, that is the millennial reign, healing the earth, setting everything back together. So in the day, that's what would happen, that the light of the moon, so the moon that we have now, I believe, is a fake object that is placed there, that gives off a false light that hurts us. And the sun that we have used to be our moon. So the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. So the moon became the sun. Like I was saying in all of these different places before I knew this was a Bible verse, that the moon became the sun and the sun that we had was much larger, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. So it's so bright, it's almost as if it's seven days, and that is going to be during the millennial reign, in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. So when you have eyes to see and ears to hear, uh, you can read this and understand exactly what it's talking about. So here we have a crop circle with seven balls around it, seven circles around it. And it looks like a starburst in the middle. And you have this circular pattern going around. And inside this uh, circle, there's some kind of designs. I'm not sure what they are. But then you have seven spheres around it. And there's seven points on the starburst. All right, when I found this, crop circle all i did for some odd reason i forget why but i was just googling crop circles and this was the first image i saw and i was like oh wow i didn't know the sevenfold sun thing which sevenfold uh sun was a thing and then i saw this after reading it and i was like whoa this is the sevenfold sun being depicted But I did know that the Ottoman Empire flag, this was part of my evidence, what I was saying, this isn't a crescent moon. People think this is a crescent moon and star for Islam. That is not what this is. This is a smaller sun going in front of a sun that's seven times larger than it. So if it was in directly in the center, it would be something like this, right? Forget the uh, starburst for a second, but the inner part, it would this going inside of it, there would be an outer part and it would cause there to be the star right here. You see the star would cause the sevenfold sun, the sun dogs, as they are going to be known as. Because guess what? The sevenfold sun has been seen in 1661. This was something that was seen. So when we're talking about 
the star burst happening, the sun being here. That's what the star burst is happening because of the, I don't even want to say that it would be in a full eclipse, but somehow the sun entering in this sun caused an explosion of sorts. I'm not sure what it was exactly, but there is a sevenfold sun miracle that was seen. This has its own Wikipedia page. So I'm going to read what I have taken from that page. The sevenfold sun miracle was an atmospheric phenomenon witnessed in Gdansk in 1661. It was a complex halo phenomenon and was described by George Phalale, the pastor of the St. Marian Church, in a sermon two weeks later, which was then published under the title Sevenfold Sun Miracle, were seven sun dogs, which were seen in our skies on Sexagesima Sunday, 20th of February of the year 1661, from 11 o'clock until after 12 o'clock. The same event was also described by the astronomer Johann Hevelius the following year in his book Mercurius in Sol Visus Gidani. So very symbolic, 11 o'clock until after 12 o'clock. You know, we're in the 11th hour, and then it hits the 12th hour. Seven sun dogs were seen. So it was a banana, which was described by George Falo, and he talked about the seven sun dogs. That's exactly what this is. It's the halo phenomenon. It's this this little sun going in front of the larger sun causes the halo, which causes the sun dogs. This that is all depicting the same thing here, guys. So here's some more about it. On 20 February 1661, a complex halo phenomenon was observed by more than 1,000 people, including Phalao and Havelius, both astronomers in the city of Gdansk on the Baltic. As well as the true sun, two mock suns, Parhelia and an Anthelion, were seen, with halos at 22 degrees and 46 degrees, and topped with an upper tangent arc and a circumzenithal arc, respectively. Of particular interest to modern scientists were the mention of three further mock suns, one at the intersection of the 22-degree halo and the upper tangent arc, and two others at 90 degrees to the sun, also at the intersections of an immense but incomplete halo. So there you have it. You have all these different mock suns in addition to the true sun. The first is thought to be a particularly bright parry arc, mistakenly described as a parhelion. The other two are the associated halo, which has been labeled Havel's halo, have no theoretical explanation and have not been recorded since, though one possible sighting was reported in 1909. In the absence of conclusive evidence, these observations are regarded as possibly being a misidentification of the rare but not unusual 120-degree parhelia. So here's that Urbano Monte map of 1587 that I was talking about with dinosaurs, giants, hybrids, and large animals around the outer ring. You guys really got to check out this map. There's all sorts of different sea monsters, like you see this part and this part. That's one sea monster here. There's a sea monster over here. There's all sorts of different sea monsters, hybrids. There's a panther being with a, the head of a human. There's over here somewhere, there's a panther being with female breasts and a human head. Uh, or maybe it's like a sea bo seal body, not a, uh, a panther. But this Urbano Monte, U-R-B-A-N-O Monte, M-O-N-T-E, map of 1587. Google it and it'll come right up and you can look at it. There is a bird here that's carrying an elephant by its feet. There's another sea monster right here with its tail or another part of it over here, uh, you know, like the Loch Ness monster type deal. This is South America. This is Africa. South America is attached to Antarctica, which is Tierra del Fuego. There's a whole ring going around the outside where maybe this land isn't here anymore that's under Africa. I don't know that to be true, but it may not be here. This is Australia. 
Uh, it's very interesting. This is the North Pole. This is North America over here, Canada. You got Russia all over here. Uh, you have Europe all right here. It's very interesting what is going on in this map. So let's take a closer look. You have some kind of ostrich right here. You have here you go the panther with the human head. You have kings like this all over the map, uh, all around the outside like that. I don't know what they represent. You have these huge birds. I mean, look at these huge birds. And you have Tierra del Fuego, the land of fire. Okay. Now they've taken it and moved it to South America. South America is detached from Antarctica. There's some very interesting stuff with that as well, but we're not going to get into that here. All right, so that is the end of part three. Please like, share, subscribe, comment your thoughts. I really would appreciate if you guys could uh, just let me know what you think so far. And if you haven't seen parts one and two yet, well, go catch yourself up and stay tuned for parts four through eight. And we will see you there.